Hello again, fellow friends on the internet. Hopefully this will be a nice and relaxing video for you. An intro, I'm Amber, and I'm making a game. An RPG called The Secret Life of Dorian Pink set in an alternate reality of the picture of Dorian Gray, the world-renowned classic by Oscar Wilde. This book was written in 1980 and used to be banned for being homoerotic and overly suggestive. A lot of people know this book, a lot of people don't. That's okay, almost my whole family don't. And so this video is for them too. I want to share this story with my dear subscribers who might not be familiar with it. So more people can join in on the fun with the Dorian Pink game. Before Dorian Pink, there was Dorian Gray. This was the life of the OG Dorian Gray, the whiniest twink of the Victorian era. It was a nice day in Basel Harwood's quaint little art studio in London. Basel was my friend, who's a painter. And let me tell you, he low-key has a crush on me. Basel was painting the one and only me, Dorian Gray. Basel's friend Lord Henry barged in, much to Basel's dismay. You see, Basel is concerned that Lord Henry was going to influence me with his hedonistic ideology. Hedonistic as in the pursuit of pleasure above all else. And Basel was right. Lord Henry tattled a bit, and I started awfully obsessing over my youthful and beautiful face. Or, rather, the idea of losing it one day. I looked to the portrait Basel painted of me. OMG, how I wish I could stay young forever! How great it would be to let this stupid portrait bear the weight of all my sins while I maintain my gorge looks! I'm 20 years old, by the way. At some point, I fell in love with a young actress, working in a theatre in some London slum. Her name was Sybil Vane. Her brother was sus of me, but Sybil didn't give a shit. She said she can never again look at fake love antics performed on stage the same way, now that she has tasted the real thing. To be honest, I thought that was really shallow, so I broke up with her. I went back home and realized the portrait of my beautiful face now has a sort of evil sneer on it. I thought, shit, my wish has come true. I must now try to rewind my karma. I shall write a passionate love letter and apologize to Sybil tomorrow. But the next day, Henry visited to deliver the news that Sybil has taken her own life. I... I felt guilty at first, but was consoled by Lord Henry, who said, Sybil Vane represented to you all the heroines of romance. Mourn for Ophelia, if you like. Cry out against heaven because the daughter of Bob and Tio died, but don't waste your tears over Sybil Vane. She was less real than they are. We concluded that Sybil was merely a wonderful tragic figure, acting on the world stage in a play about the realities of love. Oh, and in case somebody sees the decaying portrait of me, I stored it in the attic. Lord Henry later gave me a present. A yellow book? It documents the decadent, indulgent life of a French elite in the 19th century. I was so greatly inspired, I spent the next 18 years of my life indulging in sin and corruption. My reputation suffered over the 18 years, but I was pretty, so people were still okay with me. Meanwhile, the portrait ages and bears the burdens of my sins. I think it was oozing pus, species or blood or something at some point. Anyway. One evening, Basil confronts me about my shitty reputation. He couldn't believe my pure pretty face could do what those rumors said I did. He nagged so much that I decided to show him the portrait in the attic, the wretched image of my soul. It was now horrifying, but not quite completely ruined. Yet, at least, there is still some cute parts. Basil urged me to pray and repent, but I was so angry. It's all because you painted this painting, I thought. Yeah, it wasn't my fault at all. So, I stabbed Basil and he died. I decided to blackmail my estranged friend, who's also a doctor, into helping me dispose of the body. His name was Alan Campbell. I even planned an alibi for myself. I don't crack under pressure. But later, I found out Alan Campbell took his life because of this. That same night, I visited the Opium Den and bumped into James Vane, Sybil's brother. He was trying to avenge his sister, but I managed to trick him by pointing out my young features. I told him the person who broke his sister's heart must be wrinkly now, and I'm still fresh as a daisy. 
So, he got the wrong person. He believed me at first, but I guess some nosy patron later told him my real age. So he stalked me to my country's estate, planning to find an opportune moment to kill me. But during a hunting session there, one of the hunters accidentally shot and killed him. James was hiding behind a thicket. You see, this is why one shouldn't slink around like a snake. Wowee. What wild events have ensued? I've had enough at this point. I decided to be righteous again. I want to redeem myself. There's this girl called Hetty. She was smitten with me. But I forced myself to leave her, determined to leave her, as flower-like as I had found her. Misogynistic times, I know. I thought this was enough to improve my portrait. At least, a bit, right? But no! Now it had even more blood on top of cunning, hypocritical smile. Hate it! I looked at the knife I used to kill Basil. I thought, as it had killed the painter, so it would kill the painter's work. And all that meant it would kill the past, and when that was dead, it would be free. Honestly, I was confused as to why I didn't do this earlier, but I decided to stab the painting. Apparently, I caused a loud crash. The servants rushed to my room, only to find the beautiful portrait of a beautiful Dorian Gray, and their weazened and disfigured master with a knife in his heart. Yep, that was me. Yep, yep, it's pretty wild. It's a fairly short book with not much bullshit descriptions, too, so I think it's great. And it talks about how society gives way more forgiveness to people who fit beauty standards, even if they might not fit moral ones. And there are other social commentary I don't have time to discuss in this video. There's been discussion on whether Lord Henry's evil or not, because he's like Devil's Temptation whispering beside Dorian's ear. I personally think he's not that evil necessarily because he doesn't live what he preaches. He just likes to talk big. Meanwhile, Dorian is so whiny, blames other people for his hardships, and takes life too seriously. It was part of why I made the Dorian Pink game. I sometimes imagine what life would be like for Dorian if he stopped obsessing over fallible human ideologies and used his intelligence more flexibly and have a sense of humor. Let me know what you think if you actually think something after this video. Do you think Lord Henry is evil? What would you say to Dorian Gray if you had met him? Wow, you're still here. I wanted to say two things at the end for my subscribers who subscribe for the Dorian Pink devlogs. First, I finally created a landing page for the Dorian Pink game. I won't force you, but if you fancy checking it out, it's at dorian.pink. Feel free to subscribe with your precious email and I will let you know when the game is open for wishlist or goes live. And second, as you may know I've mentioned previously about how Dorian Pink devlogs are coming to an end. However, as we all know, making a game is not just about developing it, but marketing it as well. Games exist to be played. I'm not an expert marketer. Honestly? I'm not an expert anything. I guess I can call myself an expert graphic designer, but I'm not even that right now. But Anyway, I think the next vlog I will share some marketing stuff that I'm doing for my game, and some stuff I learned from books, websites, and other things. So before that video comes out, if you have any questions about this topic, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching as usual, and bye!